Let's go live now to Josh Frydenberg. He joins us uh, from Melbourne. Josh Frydenberg, thanks for your time. Congratulations Good morning. on what, what will the Prime Minister describe as a miracle win. How, uh, yeah. how, how's it feeling this Monday after, after the achievement of Saturday? Look, it's a very pleasing result for us. Uh, and, of course, we were behind in the polls, but we always knew we were in the game. Uh, it looks like we have lost a couple of colleagues, and I'm talking about Chris Crutha, uh, in Victoria and Dunkley and, uh, and maybe others and so my thoughts are with them. At the same time, there's a lot of new people who will be coming into the parliament that will really add to the strength of our team, uh, which is also very exciting. So we're waiting for a few seats still to be determined and, and a few more postal votes to be counted, but it's obviously a very pleasing result. Treasurer, why did you have an 8% swing against you in your seat of Kuyong, do you think? Well, it was a very unusual contest, Laura, in Kuyong this time. It was basically a four-cornered contest. Not only did I face the traditional rival of the Labor Party, but also a very well-resourced and high-profile uh, Greens campaign, as well as a, uh, a, an independent who was claiming to be a Liberal and trying to take the votes um, off, my, uh, off, off, the, off me as, as the Liberal Party's candidate. Um, and Victoria has been a difficult place for the Liberal Party in terms of recent elections, and I'm talking particularly about what happened at the state election. Uh, and so I think all those factors were at play, but I've been very heartened uh, by uh, the result and the fact that I've been uh, re-elected by the people of Kuyong in a tight contest. I will want to ask you about the uh, aspirational voter that really, mm. I think, the, the Prime Minister and yourself, you know, targeted it very effectively at the weekend. But just to pick up on Laura's question, do you accept that while uh, in certain parts of the country uh, the, the climate change issue is not one which is that uh, fierce in others? It is, you know, like your area, like in Warringa, sure. like in the seat of Indi as well. Um, uh, it, it remains an issue that the government has to take seriously, doesn't it? Absolutely. And I take it seriously. Scott Morrison takes it seriously. And our government accepts the science of climate change. Climate change is real and we need to be part of an international solution. Now, Australia has a strong track record in meeting and beating its targets and will continue to, uh, to do that when it comes to the 2020 target and 2030 target. I think what the Australian people are looking for are practical solutions. They want to know you're taking it seriously, but they also want to see results. And that is what our $3.5 billion climate solutions package does. I think where Bill Shorten came unstuck on this issue during the election is he had a very high target, but he couldn't actually explain to the people how he was going to get there, and more importantly for them, the economic impact on their lives. And it shouldn't be a choice between reducing emissions and having a strong economy. You can have both, but you do need to explain that to the Australian people, and that's what we have endeavoured to do and will continue to do. What is the message on, on the climate change front? Is that, you know, electors are perhaps sick of talking about it on one front? Is it that young people want to see more action, um, you know, working people not so much? I mean, it, it's not one clear message, is it? Well, I think it comes down to what is going to be the impact on the economy. Uh, and if you can explain to people how you have practical uh, solutions um, that don't hurt the economy but actually create jobs in the process, I think that is the winning formula. And what we are endeavouring to and do... And coal's popular? Well, look, coal's a reality. Uh, and, the, and I think this is a point that some of the extremists in this debate miss is coal uh, is, an, is a part of our energy mix and will continue to be so for, for plenty of time to come. But um, there is a transition underway, and I believe it's an inevitable transition uh, to lower emissions form of energy. But you can't just switch coal-fired power stations off. Uh, we lose the, okay. the lights on the east coast of Australia. What you need to do is smooth out that transition, uh, and that's why Snowy 2.0 is really important. Do you feel that, your, uh, that the Morrison government and you as Treasurer have inherited the legacy of the, you know, the Howard battlers with your, your message to people about, you know, you have a go, you get a go, that sort of message to the aspirational voter? Well, clearly that is a message that Scott Morrison 
uh, made clear through the campaign when he, talk, when he was talking about quiet Australians. And these people, Kieran and Laura, go about their business. Uh, they want to raise a family. They want to run a business. Uh, they want to save for their retirement. They want to own a home. Um, and they don't necessarily join every demonstration uh, in, the, in, in the major cities uh, on, on the issues of the day. And they don't hang out on Twitter and uh, participate in what can sometimes be an acrimonious debate. They just get on with their jobs and they want better livelihoods for their families. And I think that was the message that Scott Morrison, myself and, and our whole team uh, were communicating, that we had the policies to do so and that you couldn't risk the Labor Party with their high taxing, high spending agenda, particularly at this time where the economy is facing strong economic headwinds, both domestically and internationally. Besides tax cuts, what do you have a mandate for and will you be going beyond that mandate before the next term? Any new uh, policies will you take to the next election? Well, the next election. I mean, that's that's three years away, Laura. Don't let's not get ahead of, <laughs> ahead of ourselves on that one. Um, what we made clear in the budget was that it was an economic plan, not just for the next year, but actually for the next decade, and that included responsible economic management so that we could pay down Labor's debt, uh, and that was the uh, the job creation strategy around that. But it was also the tax cuts you alluded to, and that's our first priority uh, to pass that legislation through the parliament. Then you've got the infrastructure spending, you've got the new apprentices, you've got the record funding on hospitals, on schools. We announced during the, budget, uh, during the election campaign a new uh, first home uh, buyer's housing policy, which I think is going to be really important. And we're obviously backing small business significantly uh, with the extension of the instant asset write-off and a, a number of other measures. So we've got a busy legislative agenda, uh, but what we will, will not do is we'll not increase the tax burden on everyday Australians, people who are just wanting to get ahead, people who have planned for their retirement on the rules that they thought were in place and had bipartisan support. Uh, the Labor Party was telling the Australian people that's what they were going to do, and clearly uh, that did not uh, go down very well. Arthur Sinodina said that uh, on Saturday night that it might be a time to take some of the, the um, policies from, from Labor that you might be able to find some common ground on. And the, the one I think particularly that uh, people have been discussing is the National Energy Guarantee, that maybe you might be able to find some common ground on there to, to revisit that, particularly with the departure of a number of people from your your parliamentary party who were so have been so you know fierce in terms of their advocacy around these matters not just tony abbott but others that are no longer in the parliament well, as you know, the National Energy Guarantee had two components. One of that was a reliability guarantee, which is vitally important to smooth out this transition to more intermittent sources of power, namely wind and solar. Now, that reliability component of the National Energy Guarantee is going ahead, and Angus Taylor has already had very uh, productive uh, discussions uh, with the, the state uh, energy ministers on that point. But we laid out our energy Is there other common ground policy. you can find with Labor, though? Well, we laid out our energy policy before the election and we'll faithfully implement that now that the election has come. Um, uh, and that is particularly about the ACCC's recommendations about how to back more generation. That's going to be a real priority for us, uh, how we can support uh, new baseload generation, particularly to support industries uh, that are high energy users. Treasurer Josh Frydenberg, the newly elected Treasurer, thanks so much for your time yeah. this morning. Appreciate it. Good to, good to be with you. Coming up, Tanya Plibersek will officially enter the Labor leadership race today with the backing.